This is going to be fun. We, um, I was not here when this gentleman was here the first time, but I heard it was a blast. That's why he's back. Please welcome, this is his second appearance. Please welcome the PGA Teacher of the Year and owner of Malaska Golf, Mr. Mike Malaska. Come on up, Mike. Good to have you How here, you sir. Doing? Good. Well, we tried to make this about golf, and yeah. when, when that was the topic, there was only one obvious guy to have, Mike Malaska. Tell us a little bit about who you are, your history, and, uh, and your storied career holding a golf club. Well, I've been around golf a long time. I mean, I started when I was in high school. I was a baseball player and picked golf up for something to do in the off season, because at that time, golf was not, I mean, you were gonna play one of the major sports. It wasn't golf. <laughs> and uh, you didn't even want anybody to know you did it. And, and now it's changed dramatically. And so I got involved in the game and it's been, a, it's been quite, the, quite the ride. So I played professionally for a long time, uh, struggled. You know, I started out, I was really good early and then struggled like a lot of you do. And the struggle led me to learning more and more about the game, you know, physiology behind it, the physics behind it, to try to make it simpler for people to play because it was really easy for me when I first started. You know, I, I couldn't understand. I could hit a baseball coming at me at high speeds. You put a ball still on the ground, that's got to be easier. <laughs> and, and people laugh, but it actually is. What we've done, though, is we've complicated the heck out of it because the ball is stationary. And so it's been my quest to kind of figure out what I had when I was young and then help people enjoy the game more because that's really what we're all in. I mean, what the Duttons are doing and all that, this is, we're all in the human development business. So you, everybody who's here today, you're designed to move. I mean, that's what you're designed to do. You develop and maintain yourself through motion. And so anything we can do to get you moving or participating in things, arts and all of that kind of stuff is really good. And people are afraid of golf. You know, it's, I, it's, it's interesting for me to, to watch and listen to great athletes that go, you know what, I've been able to do everything really well and I come to this stupid game and I'm terrible. And I go, well, why is that? I don't know, but it's driving me crazy. So that's, well, some of it's that and a lot of it's just concepts. It's what are you really trying to do? You know, what are the things you're trying to do? You know, we're the only industry, the golf industry, that doesn't have a defined terms. So if you say weight shift in golf and you ask 10 different golf pros or people what it means, you get 10 different answers. If you say release, if whatever you say, there's multiple answers. If any industry had multiple answers or words that meant many different things, it'd be chaos. Well, that's kind of where we're at. It's, that's where you're at. You're in chaos because you don't know even what you're trying to do. So my career has been all around, you know, those kinds of things and, and learning more about the game. I still participate myself in senior events, uh, senior PGA championships and stuff. So I love to play the game. I love sports and I love just working with people and seeing them outside doing things and moving and enjoying the challenge of different activities. So golf's just one of them. Well, um, that is awesome. And, and you've figured out a way to, to uh, help other people and enjoy the sport you've You've had, it's been a huge part of your life. Tell us a little bit, of, I know you're a modest guy, but tell us a little bit about the award, awards that you've won. Well, uh, I've been the section teacher of the year a number of times, which is in the local sections. And then in 11, I was the national teacher of the year, which for the PGA of America, that's like our Academy Award. I mean, that's, just, that's you can't go any higher than that. So that was, that was great for, and, and those come from your peers. So you're voted in from your peers. So. Uh, you get it from providing education and information to the, the masses uh, about the game, uh, about health and wellness and everything that we're doing with golf and what we try to do with it. So uh, those awards have been great, a lot of playing awards. And, and the game's just been really, really good to me. And my family has taken us all over the world. We lived in Japan for a few years. And I'm all over the world with Jack Nicklaus. So I see how golf and the culture of golf is different in every different uh, different part of the world. Uh, people believe the game to be different, so it's, it's uh, fitting into what they believe the game to be, which is really interesting. Just out of curiosity, round of applause if you play golf uh, occasionally. Round of applause if you do that. Now, round of applause if you play it as well as you'd like to. <laughs> That's the cool thing about golf is <laughs> you're, you're always playing against the course and you're playing against a number in your head that you want to hit. So uh. it, it is, it, you know, and it's uh, 
the, the way golf is set up, I mean, it's one of the few games where you can go out and you can have four people, all different levels. You could have a tour player, a, a, a decent player, say a 10 handicap, a 20 handicap, and a total beginner, playing in the same group, have fun together, and actually compete against each other, which very few sports allow you to be able to do that. And when it comes to families, the opportunity to be on the golf course with your family, with your kids, to get them for four hours or three hours, undivided attention is almost impossible. So golf offers a lot of opportunities to enrich families and lives and friendships and things like that. So it's a lot more than just a game. It's a lot more than just hitting the ball, even though that's what people seem to think it is. But uh, there's a lot more to it than just that. Yeah, it's, all, it's such a great sport for your business. If you want to do some good business networking, there's no better place than the golf course. It's just you get to know a lot about a guy by watching him on the golf course. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you can learn a lot about people <laughs> real quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we haven't even played. And no. he, he kind of knows how I would be. Uh, a friend of mine uh, growing up, his, uh, his father uh, rose to the rank of vice president of J.C. Penney's. This is back when J.C. Penney's was huge. And he said it was strictly because he was a scratch golfer and he could go out and, and do business deals. You got four hours with a guy, you can do a lot of business on the golf course. No, no, it, it creates relationships. So youth, when they get involved with it, if they just play it decent, especially females in golf now, there's more and more of that. And I've been involved in corporate America my entire life with golf. And when you see a, a young female that can play the game and is in corporate America, they go right up the, up, the, up the ladder really quick because it's, it is the game that corporate America can play and they can all play it together. So whether or not you play the tour, I mean, that's such a small percentage and we talked about that earlier, what it takes to, to do that. But the game itself provides so many opportunities for families and youth and business opportunities. It's incredible. I mean, you look at what golf does here in Arizona, you look at how many golf courses and how many businesses survive based on golf. You know, you have resorts and everything. So there's a lot more to it than just hitting a golf ball, even though that's what everybody wants to do. Yeah. I read the other day that if you want your child to be any good at golf, they really should start when they're about five. Well, I didn't start when I was five. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to play the sports that I did play when I was five. <laughs> so if you ever want to go out and do like four square. Yeah. <laughs> Marbles, maybe. I will rock your world, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Marbles, yeah, exactly. Uh, well, that, that's awesome. What did you ever? Uh, where'd you grow up, by the way? I grew up in Utah, in Salt Lake City. You know, I was a big skier. Baseball, sports were uh, whatever the season was. You know, basketball and all that. So, but I've been coming to Arizona for too long. You know, <laughs> fifty some odd years now. But did you ever think back then that golf would be this huge? I mean, golfers are on first name. You say Ricky or Phil or Tiger, and yeah. everybody knows who you're talking about. It's no, when, when I started, I mean, no. I mean, I knew Jack Nicklaus, and I knew Oliver Palmer, okay? And, and that was about it. And I really wasn't that interested in playing golf because it looked pretty silly to me. Like I say, <laughs> it, it's a stationary ball, and you stand there, and you, can, and you hit it, and then you go get it again. I mean, I'm just like, this is... <laughs> yeah. First of all, it's not very interesting, and it's not very, can't be very hard. And, and <laughs> like I say, I was, I was lucky that I did it well early. I'm going to show you something here. Uh, if people understand what you're really trying to do with the game, uh, there's so much information out there in our industry which kills people because you just have all this random information, and you're trying to randomly pick something that you think is the tip of the week. Keep your left arm straight, keep your head down, whatever. But really, it's a club face and a ball, and you, and you hold the club face in your hand. So when, when good players are playing and they're looking at that ball, this club face is their hands. So they're looking down at their hands, and they play golf with their hands. And so if people just start to do that, when I teach and I put a club face in somebody's hand, I say, well, this makes it go lower, this makes it go higher, that curves it to the left, and this curves it to the right. You do it in the left hand, you put both hands together, and you go, there you go, now make your arm swing and hit it, that's it. Game over, get really good at that. <laughs> and they go, they go, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, no, that's really all it is. I mean, when I started playing, this was, a, this was a baseball bat. That was the handle of the bat, and that was the toe of the bat. And all I was trying to do was hit a ball to center field. And I'm going, are you kidding me? How easy is this? And then I started, I got pretty good. 
Then people said, oh, we got to get you taking some lessons and working on this. <laughs> and then I got really bad. And so, I, you know, like I said, I've spent my career around trying to figure out how to simplify down what golf is so people enjoy it and so that they get out and, and, and just get out and move. You know, the fitness industry now has come into golf. Oh, yeah. Well, all of a sudden now, it's a hard game. It takes a lot of time costs a lot of money, and you better be in shape to play it. Who's going to sign up for that movie? <laughs> I mean, it's like, it is not that hard. You don't have to be in shape. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. You know, so it's a great development game. So we got to, you know, people are afraid of it. You know, oh, what if I embarrass myself? And, and I go, well, you know, it's, it's, it's fun to be out and explore yourself physically and, and being involved in another motion activity. And by the way, they're all very much the same, so... That's awesome. Yeah, it used to be that uh, after an event way back in the day, they all ran to the bar. And now that they've got the fitness trainer trailer out there and they're doing crunches. And oh, it, that was a Gary Player kind of, he was the guy that really kind of. He was the first one to really be involved in fitness. For a long time, they thought that being in shape was bad for golf. <laughs> and, hey, I'm and, still trying to, I'm still promoting that. And most of us support that, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I, you know, like I say, actually, for most people, if you go play golf, that is your fitness routine. I mean, if you just get up and move, you're better than you are, than you were. You're moving more. So, yeah, the tour now is, to my, in my opinion, has actually gone too far. A lot of these guys are getting hurt. Uh, they're working out so hard, they get hurt working out. And you're going, well, whoops, you're supposed to be working out so you don't get hurt. Now they're getting hurt working out. So, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a combination of the two things. You know, you do... Definitely, if you want to play your best, being in shape is helpful. But for most people, you don't have to be in shape to play well. You don't have to be that physically strong to hit the golf ball a decent distance. You just have to know what you're doing. Yeah, I always, you know, because I'm you're you're bigger than I am, but we're big guys. I see these little guys just hitting the heck out of the ball. And it's because they know what they're doing and they're. It's hand-eye coordination and all that stuff. There's well, yeah, I mean, for all, for all of you, if you just stood and you just dropped your arms, you just put your arms out your side and you let them drop, that's enough arm speed to hit a golf ball over 200 yards. So unless your arms won't move independent of your shoulders, unless you're frozen <laughs> like this, you can actually learn to play golf at a pretty good level if you know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm, is it's simple. Let's go play right Let's now, go. Mike. <laughs> Well, I'm looking at your bag here, and I'm thinking maybe this is my problem. I don't have some of those fun little things. What do you got going on back there? Well, a lot of it is a lot of it is just visual stuff. So everybody's played this game. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh. Okay. All right. <laughs> no. So uh, you, you take baseball, and people say, "Well, you don't want your golf swing to be like your baseball swing." I go, "Yes, you do. It's almost exactly like a baseball swing." The only difference between really golf and baseball was when you hit a baseball, you're hitting it out in front of you out here. When you hit a golf ball, you're hitting it right here. So the pivot point or what you do with the bat is a little bit different point. It's a little bit different timing, but the motion is almost exactly the same. If I take it from up here and I just turn it and I put a ball there, so when I get really good baseball players, it's the first thing I do with them is I put a ball on a tee and I give them a bat. And they all put the ball up here. I say, okay, now let's move the ball right there. And they go, well, it would never get there. I said, well, humor me. You say you're a pretty good athlete. Can you make that ball go to center field? And they go, well, yeah, sure. So then they take the bat, boom, put it on the back of the ball. They go, oh, it's just a different pivot point. It's just a little bit different timing. So it's here instead of up here. And immediately, these baseball players hit it a long ways. Yeah. So a lot of golf, again, is we already know how to do it. If you've thrown a ball, that's the basic motion in golf right here. Serve a tennis racket, hit a baseball, hit a golf ball. I mean, that's the motion you're using. So a golf swing is really <coughs> nothing more than this motion right here. That's all it is. That's my golf swing. If you can learn how to do this, you can play golf. All you have to do from there is your body starts to move a little more and you keep those same things and that's it. And face control. That's not what you hear. I mean, you hear all this convoluted ideas. I went to a conference one time and the guy explained something to everybody. It took him about three minutes to explain it. And he says, do you think you could do what I just explained? And everybody went, no. He says, that's funny because I just explained how to walk. <laughs> so. But what if Every, I can't do that? Well, 
now we probably aren't playing golf. But, you know, so we've taken a simple mo motion pattern that we all know how to do, and because the ball's stationary, you're standing over it with this checklist of about 100 things, and so you really don't know what to focus on. So the game for me has been a lot about human development and how people learn. So I've learned how you learn. And, and again, we don't have a learning process in golf. In math, two plus two is four, okay? We can go on. Now, if you're getting two plus two and you're getting six, algebra is probably not your deal. <laughs> it doesn't make algebra wrong. So what's the two plus two in golf? Well, we haven't really decided what that is. And so people are out there trying to do algebra and they can't do basic math. And they're going, I'm struggling with this. I go, really? So, uh, you know, it's, like I say, it's been fun. I've been very fortunate to be at Lucendus and Superstition Mountain here in the Valley. Uh, great facilities. I've been around golf all around the world. Uh, I work for Jack Nicklaus. He's been a good friend of mine for years. So I've had the opportunity to be around one of the greatest players, probably the greatest player to ever play the game. And it, it's been interesting for me to see how he processes information. And um, the golf game has allowed me to be with presidents of the United States, vice presidents, big company people. So you get to see the constants and successful people and, and how they perceive things and how they grew up. And it's been great. So you're uh, Lascendus and Superstition Mountain. Uh -huh. people, do you give private lessons? If yeah, I do. I do, okay. for sure. And uh, off the top of your head, quick lightning round, who's the... Um, the, the celebrity that we'd all know that you worked with that picked up the game and, and knows what they're doing and can play it really well? Anybody uh, uh, that's a... Well, Kenny G, uh, I've spent a lot of time with him. He went from a 15 handicap to about a two in less than a year. Wow. Uh, doesn't surprise me, you know, he's a great short youth saxophone player, very dedicated, uh, believes in perfection, was willing to work at it, which is another <laughs> interesting concept. People go, oh, I'm a 20, I'd like to be a 12, and preferably by next month, and I really don't practice much. <laughs> and you go, okay, we'll just play fewer holes. <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, see? It's an easy answer. That's why he gets the big bucks right That's there. Right. <laughs> All right, now who's the worst? Who's the, who's the guy you worked with and you went, there's no help, pick up tennis. You know. Please say Charles Barkley. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't get a no. So I didn't get a chance to work with Charles. I found that very interesting. Here's a superior athlete that was just totally mentally destroyed with the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you know, he in 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 uh, homage to him, he took it really well. I mean, he has. He's he's been a great uh, uh, supporter of the game. And even though he struggled with it, he stays after it. You know, and and uh, but yeah, he for a talented athlete, that's about as bad as I've seen. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I wish we had more time. Uh, will you come back and do this again sometime in the future? I hope this hasn't ruined you for wanting to come for like, back. No, no, it's, it's, it's been great. No, All right, good. You guys, MalaskaGolf.com, you can, you can go online, and it's, I've, I'm developing a learning site. So it's a structured learning program, which is really easy to follow, uh, which I found interesting, like I say in golf. We don't have a def definition of terms. We don't have step one, step two. We have multiple instructors with all these different ideas about how to do it, and you're just getting more confused. So yeah, I'd love to come back anytime. What's the website again? MalaskaGolf.com. And if you want to remember his name, just picture Homer Simpson playing golf. No, Homer Simpson talking about Alaska, he'd be like, mm, Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> MalaskaGolf.com. That was a stretch. I haven't had much sleep, Mike. That, and that's how you make the big bucks? <laughs> hey, thanks for so much. Uh, stick around. If anybody's got any questions, real quick, um, the first lesson's free. It'll take like 20 seconds. And then, uh, boy, go. it's such a great game. It's so much fun. And it would be so much fun to, to learn how to play the, the game. So uh, go see Mike Malaska. Thanks, guys. Um, Thank real quick, because we stayed. I, ke I kept you a little long today, and we're going to turn you loose to the world. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody that was our guest today. I'd like to thank um, our sponsors. Uh, once again, Crescent Crown Distributing for this great place to, uh, to have our, our monthly meeting. Uh, go ahead and see a spring training game. It's a great way to support uh, professional sports and also give back to the city of Mesa. So go see a game. And uh, with, that, with that, we'll see you next month at Mesa Morning Live. Go out and make it a great day, folks. Thank you.